to, you have to change the way you're doing things a little bit in order to have the ch- paychecks show up when you want them to. But uh, it's, you know, it, you just have to change the way you're thinking about it. There's no magic to how you do that. Episode 150. This is The Business of Architecture. Welcome back, Architect Nation. This is the show where you'll discover tips, strategies, and secrets for running a profitable and impactful architecture practice. If you aren't already on the Business of Architecture email list, you're missing out on the valuable, free, practice-building resources I share only via email. Getting on the list is simple. Visit businessofarchitecture.com and click the green Join Today button. I am your host, Enoch Sears. To get more profit or efficiency in your firm, check out this business tip from Peter Drucker. What's measured improves. Now, I found this to be so true, and as a firm owner, you must be tracking your financial key performance indicators. One of the easiest ways to do this is with a software application like ArchiOffice. Get a live walkthrough of the software by visiting ArchiOffice.com demo, and a big thank you to ArchiOffice for supporting this show. Several years ago, architect Rick Wolnicek set out on an ambitious journey to create a better time tracking and invoicing software specifically for architects. After spending a lot of time, effort, and money, he walked away from the project, which was named Corbu. Well, in today's episode, we're going to talk with Rick about his lessons learned and other pointers that he's learned over his career as an architect and architecture firm owner. So, Rick, what first started your interest in accounting practices for architects? Well, it was uh, pretty much by accident. Uh, I joined uh, f- my former mentor in a two-man firm. He was he was on his own, and I joined him. And we were both coffee drinkers, and we were on uh, the water supply in our building was two floors down. So it was a real pain to make your own coffee. Luckily, there was a carryout across the street. So he would make trips over there. We'd alternate going to get coffee. And this would be, you know, four or five times a day. So at some point, I said, you know, I really would like to solve this coffee problem because I absolutely loathe going over to the King Quick and getting coffee. He said, I don't mind going over there. He says, what I loathe is bookkeeping. (laughs) So we struck a deal. I would do the books. He would get the coffee. So I had to uh, find uh, a a book on how to do accounting. I found something through the AIA and we were off to the races. You know, we, you know, actually using a pad of paper, you know, ledger paper and It was all by hand and pencil because there are lots of mistakes. But anyway, you know, having read the book and all that, I always had some background in in accounting. Then maybe three or four years later, I started my own firm and had to resurrect what I knew about accounting. And uh, we limped along with some homemade systems for maybe five or six years. And uh, then... I got a phone call from uh, Dell Tech, and I think it was called Harper and Schumann at the time, offering to uh, set me up with a really nice accounting system for just twenty thousand dollars. And I I passed on that and said, when when you can get rid of a, a zero on that, maybe we can talk again. So uh, sure enough, about a year later, they they realized that there weren't many takers at twenty grand. And we're back offering it for 2000 I jumped on board. And so for maybe 20, 25 years, we used Dell Tech's Advantage or previous versions of that. It was all the same system, same, you know, uh, subscription that we were buying. And as time went on, I didn't need to, to use that system. In fact, over those 20, 25 years, I maybe had three hours logged in doing stuff. Um, but I was there to show somebody else how it needed to be done, what the answers needed to be, how to interpret this, that, and the other thing. So, you know, I kind of backed into it. It's it's not not truly a love by any stretch of imagination. I probably have the same reaction to accounting as most architects. It, it just so happens that I, you know, have a long background with it. 
So you used Dell Tech for a while, and were there some failings, or what what prompted you to to go out and create Corbu? Well, the uh, the, the real issue was that uh, Dell Tech stopped uh, supporting uh, Advantage. And we limped along doing a lot of things ourselves that we used to get from them. And finally, um, it just was, was a real burden. They wanted us to switch to their vision product. And that was going to cost us in the neighborhood of twelve to $15,000, uh, probably half to two thirds with them and another third or so with someone to help us move our data from their one product to their others. And that pretty much tore it for me that, you know, you, you create it as any way you could have. You're hoping to move your advantage folks to vision. Why in the world wouldn't you set it up so there's a button I can push to dump all my data into your new system? Anyway, so we uh, began looking around. This was about... 2010, and the economy was not in great shape. So we weren't looking to, to get into involved in a really fancy system. We actually found a program, it's probably still around, uh, online uh, system called Cobalt. And uh, some guys in Belgium creates not for architects, but it was project oriented. So it worked for architects. Uh, couldn't do a, uh, any kind of invoicing with it. And you really couldn't do timekeeping with it, but keeping the, all the expenses and logging in your uh, receivables and all that worked pretty well. Um, at, after a couple of years of using that, I stumbled across another system called uh, B2B, and this is the precursor to the core boot product. And uh, the B2B was a generic timekeeping, uh, bookkeeping. It did do invoicing. Uh, you could send them by email. And uh, so it was actually going to work a bit better for us than uh, the Cobalt. But uh, its shortcoming was that it, it wasn't really as robust as you would want for project oriented uh, things. I mean, it, it was there, but it, it just needed some help. So I was constantly bugging them about, you know, surely you can do this with your system. I mean, what's the workaround? I mean, I know there's no button, but what would be my process to do this? And at some point, the owner of the software started calling me and emailing me about, uh, you know, my interest and what would it take to improve it so that it would be usable for architects. And uh, that resulted in a, a, a meeting for coffee. It turns out he's in Cincinnati. And, um, and I, you know, spent a couple hours trying to be ready as I could to answer his questions as to how would you make B2B into something that architects would love. And we spent, oh, maybe like three minutes talking along those lines. And he said, well, the real reason I wanted to talk to you is I want to do that, but I want you to help me. And I said, uh, okay, what would that look like? And he says, well, I don't really know exactly, but you know, if we can figure out whether you want to or not, we can figure out the rest of it. He says, you, you know more about this than any architect I've come across and seem to have enough interest in it. And so I just know enough about accounting to, to ask questions, you know, not that I'm a real expert. Anyway, I thought about it for a couple of days and told him, yeah, I would do it. By then I was actually retired. I'd been retired about a year and a half or so and uh, was enjoying retirement, but was kind of missing, you know, there being something purposeful to do get you up in the morning. And uh, since then, I've realized that that can go too far. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty thoroughly retired now, although I've, I've got my hobby of, of Architect Wiki. Uh, after about a year of, of working with him on that, I walked away from it. And so Corbu 
doesn't exist. I mean, it's, it's, it's partly there. Uh, the reason I walked away was just getting to be a giant pain. Uh, he was overly protective of all the ownership issues. I was doing literally all the work. He met for an hour a week with me and the programmer, and that was his time commitment. My time commitment was on an order of 10 larger than that, and I wasn't getting paid for it. And yet, you know, if I made changes to or wanted to make a change to a website, it was the conversation was all about, you know, how do I own that at the end of the day? And, you know, it just really got galling that I was investing all this in it with no guarantee whatsoever I was ever going to see the first dollar. So anyway, I, I walked away from that. Uh, I still think from time to time about going back and recreating it. Um, I've thought fairly seriously about learning enough programming that I would know how to direct that effort. Um, I know a little bit about programming, but not, not enough to take on something like that by myself. Not if it was going to be finished this century anyway. So... Uh, <laughs> Anyway, that's, that's the background on that. During that year, though, what, what happened is that I started off talking to friends of mine and a couple of former colleagues from the firm and asking them, you know, what do you do for accounting? How, how does this work? Because I, I had no idea if everybody in the world used Dell Tech or a system like we did or just what they did. And I found out that, you know, it's all over the ballpark, uh, that I'm probably was in a, a small minority of people using that system. And in hindsight, I, I think that something like Dell Tech is gross overkill for, you know, the, the type of thing that an architect needs to do, that all of the effort that you put into keeping that system uh, coherent and giving you the right answers are things that you really don't need to have the answers to. And that level of two decimal place uh, uh, certainty and that, you know, if you were to go to an accountant a couple times a year and have him, you know, balance the books and give you the, the profit and loss that you'd be in great shape, it would take you way less time. And in my case, most of those years, someone that was billable, was actually dealing with the accounting. So when, you know, you do payroll and it looks like it gets done in an hour, then later you find out that there's about four or five other hours during the month to, you know, do all the, the stuff behind the scenes to make the payroll really work, moving money, working with the government, all that stuff. You find out that that person, you know, just passed up five billable hours. And, you know, if you're busy, that's actually killing you. If you're not busy, maybe it's it's not an issue, but uh, mm -hmm. we all like busy. That's, you can't really do it if you're not busy. So, Rick, what, so, would, you say, so, what would you say would be the, the top financial management things that architects struggle with in your experience? Well, the, the one that I don't think they feel they struggle with, but that they – invest just an inordinate amount of time in is simple timekeeping. And by timekeeping, I'm talking about the whole process. Writing your time down on a piece of paper, on your calendar, in a spreadsheet, you know, or a form that somebody's making up for you, all of those are about the same effort. There's, there's really no system out there that cuts into the time it's going to take to do that. But the vast majority of firms in the United States, probably throughout the world, are under nine people or under 10 people, nine or, nine, nine or less. And so you don't typically have an accountant on board to do all this. So again, somebody is going to have to take all that paper, those spreadsheets, whatever, and compile it into the hour spent on each given job so that you can put together an invoice. That takes a lot more time than you would think. My estimate is it takes at least an hour per person that you're doing th this for throughout throughout the month. I mean, there's there's some of it that you really only need to do once or once or twice for payroll, and you don't really need to compile it for that. So 
you could do it just once a month. But of course, you don't know what's going on with your workflow if you're not doing it a couple of times a month. So systems like what we were planning with Corbu and almost any kind of uh, cloud-based system that's not true accounting, a bookkeeping system, and, you know, Harvest and FreshBooks are two of the big names that, that come, come uh, you know, to mind. Those make it really simple to enter your time. And because you're entering your time through that system, at any, at any point during the month, as many times as you want, you push a button and you know exactly how many hours have been clocked on each job. Uh, that is something we never had, even with the Dell Tech system. You had to wait to the end of a pay period. Mm. And then the accounting system bundled that all up and you accepted it or, or turned it down. And if you made a mistake, then you really paid for it in, in lots of redo, back and all that stuff back at home. And Rick, in your experience, are architects now still using spreadsheets to track time? Yeah. Um, I was, you know, the first time I started seeing people answer my survey with how you do time, that question by saying they'd use paper forms. <laughs> I mean, I was shocked. And then, you know, it turns, well, it turns out that about 45% of all my respondents, and there was, you know, around 1,400 of them, a little over 1,400, um, 45% of them either used paper or they used electronic spreadsheets. So that 45% of architectural firms are dealing with that comp, uh, compiling of time once a month. I mean, I, I had a, a woman down in, in Florida who I interviewed. I interviewed maybe 50 people uh, with a phone call as opposed to just taking the survey. And this woman in Florida who was the wife of the architect and had been doing the bookkeeping with an ancient system that, I mean, she, her, her biggest fear was that her computer would crash and she wouldn't have an accounting system and they would have to start from scratch, you know, overnight. Well, but uh, in doing the work, the biggest problem was getting the time cards from everybody and then compiling it. And they had about six or seven people. She says, you know, it basically blows a day. So, you know, the end of the month, I can't get invoices out right now because I got to get all this stuff organized, get it all figured out as to who spent what time on what project, are we going to build those hours or not? You know, the, all of those kinds of things that you get into. So that that was kind of shocking. And it's also one of the, the problems I had with the core booth issue was that I came to realize that timekeeping, which, you know, is almost a dime a dozen in terms of solutions. That's the real issue for architects, not the second thing, that, which is invoicing. Uh, because they all have a system for doing that. I, I probably spoke with or saw comments on my survey of at least five people who had Dell Tech, the same thing we had used in that it just spit out a, an invoice and I didn't look, look at it twice other than for accuracy. You know, okay, it looks kind of clunky, but, you know, what, I'm not going to fight that. Well, I've, I've talked to at least five people that had that system and what they did was they turned that invoice out and then immediately turned around and put it into a template that they had created, transcribing all the information before they would send it out because they really cared what it looked like. So when I discovered that, that's, that, that became like our, our key thing we were going to do with Corbu is had this fantastic, unbelievably customizable, gorgeous looking invoicing thing. And then we started you know, backing off of that a little bit. Well, it won't actually let you change the font, you know, and different things. And I, I just realized we were wasting our time. I mean, guys are doing this, you know, by hand just because they want a different font, mm -hmm. you know, than they could get out of their accounting system. So, you know, that, that wasn't going to be the thing that, that saved people money. It was going to be the timekeeping. So the when you say timekeeping is a challenge, what specifically is the challenge around timekeeping for architects? Just the time that it takes to take each person's uh, time card and put their time uh, in the right column 
for the project that they worked on. And then it can get a little more complicated. Maybe you're, you know, you're, you've got two phases of a project open at the same time, or you've got some uh, uh, additional services going on, you know, so it's, you've got to get all of that lined up. And then if you're using paper or a spreadsheet, you know, some, when, when a, let's say additional services comes up, the guy working on it may have had a conversation about we're going to charge extra for this and he puts it on his time card and then maybe somebody else puts it on their time card too, but they don't call it the same thing. So at the end of the month, when you're going to try and bill for this, there's this whole conversation that has to be had. Of what are we going to call this? And let's all get that the same on our time cards. You know, it's, it's, it's just a mess. I mean, it just takes, and, and it's got, it, it doesn't help, you know, do architecture at all. So, and, and with a, with a system like, you know, like uh, FreshBooks or Harvest, I mean, that, that whole process doesn't exist. You can't, you can't put time into something that hasn't been put into the system. It only takes a minute or so to put it in the system. And now everybody can add time to it, but it's just the one place. It's not three people calling it different things. You know, I'm, I'm real curious to our listeners what you're doing in your office right now. So, uh, you know, visit Business of Architecture, go beneath this episode and drop into the comments there. Let us know, how are you keeping time in your firm? Do you use some sort of cloud-based time tracking software? Or are you using spreadsheets? Or are you doing everything by paper? Or does your firm not keep time at all on, on projects? I know there are a lot of firms out there that just say, you know what, we're just going to get the projects done as quick as we can. And uh, we're not going to keep time. So... Did you find that much, Rick, that there are firms out there that, that don't keep track time at all? Yeah, I was, before I ever got the survey going and I was just talking to people that we knew here in the greater Cincinnati area, I came across one uh, who said, you know, we just don't bother. Yeah. And I said, so you don't really know then for certain how you did on a given job? He says, no, not, not uh, more than a gut feel, but it's just not worth it, the, the time and effort that it takes. So I added that question to my survey, uh, you know, how, how many or, or how, how do you keep time and gave the option of we don't keep time. And about 5 percent of firms that took the, the survey said they didn't keep time. Now, I'm sure these are all on the small end. You know, once you get to. Sure. You know, probably more than five, you know, th there's going to be too many reasons why you need to, to keep time. Uh, uh, although I did come across people that said, we absolutely do nothing by, and they were bigger. They were, you know, un maybe not over 10, but close to 10. And they were doing some, some sophisticated work. And they said, we do everything lump sum. I mean, we've got a couple of niches. We, we work in those niches. We know what it's going to take, you know. Are you in or are you out? We, we don't do it by the hour or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess the, the problem that that creates uh, that I'm not good at is forcing the client to do their homework and really come up with a program and think through things. I mean, I, I would venture to say that 50% of the projects we did had no budget whatsoever when we got started, um, particularly um, – there, there would usually be, well, let's say with a semi-public kind of a client, there would be some limit that they knew they had to, to stay within or they were going to have to get something approved. But we did work for a regional airline, uh, industrial manufacturing companies. These were more early year type things. And you know, you'd get a call and they would come out and say, we're out of space. We need help. Your job is to go talk to all the director level folks and find out what what's going on, who's growing, where 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 we need to put people, and how much space is it going to take, and how are we going to do that? So you know, if you're going to do that for anybody, I mean, you're going to have to be paying or getting paid by the hour because there's no clue as to how long this is going to take to to do this. I mean, you might run out to their facility and interview three people, or you may be making that trip just to, to review, interview one. So, you know, it, th that, that kind of thing, uh, you know, creates a, a different 
effort that you need to make. Hmm. So you identified, Rick, you talked about uh, time tracking and beautiful invoices as two of the things you wanted to accomplish with Corbu. Was there any other pain point there, a need that you saw that wasn't being fulfilled that you wanted Corbu to be able to do really easily to help architects? Yes. Um, as I said earlier, I don't think that architects really need to do accounting. They need to do bookkeeping. And those two terms are basically interchangeable. But in my mind, the difference is, is accounting um, means an accuracy of t- two decimal places. And bookkeeping is, you know, about 100 bucks cl- is, is close enough. And, and by and large, in my entire career, I never needed to know anything closer than a hundred bucks, uh, and, and oftentimes even within a thousand dollars would have been just just dandy. And the difference in time that it takes to do those two things is phenomenal. Uh, a lot of people, over fifty percent, use QuickBooks. Uh, you know, the very small minority of them like Quick QuickBooks. But they have been told by somebody that you need to do accounting and here's the the simple way to do it is is with QuickBooks. And uh, the problem is, is that you don't have to do accounting. Like I said, you know, you you need to talk to your accountant a couple of times a year to see where things are going. But if you're doing a decent job of bookkeeping where all the money going out, all the money coming in is getting logged in and, and totaled up, you know how you're doing. I mean, you can be just watching your your checkbook balance to, to know how things are going. So uh, there, there's really no surprises there. And the other thing is, is that knowing to two decimal places how much money you made or lost is, is history. It doesn't tell you what you need to be doing today or tomorrow to keep this all on track. So so I, my feeling is that what Corbu needed to do was to be a really robust bookkeeping system. And, and that's where... Harvest and uh, uh, fresh books and, and programs like that fall a little bit short in that they're really not set up to tell you how your business is doing. They're set up to tell you how this engagement is doing, this this particular project is doing, and sometimes only in terms of what your your billables are, not not really tracking all of the expenses that go into that. So uh, the the, the goal there was to be able to set it up so that with a couple of um, things that you would have to figure out outside of the accounting system, some numbers that you would put in that would create basically a multiplier, then your time would be uh, have that multiplier applied to it, put it in the column with the project, and now you've got project accounting. You know how every project that you're working on is doing because you're not only seeing, you know, what you're paying the blue printer or, the, or your engineering consultant, but you're seeing what value all of your expenses are for that particular job geared to that each hour that is being spent on it. Are there any other bookkeeping or accounting mistakes that we've overlooked and we haven't talked about that you see happening? I would say... Those are the big three, you know, the, the timekeeping, the invoicing and expenses. Um, I don't, well, maybe payroll. I, I, uh, we had payroll with that Dell Tech system. Uh, I thought it was fantastic. You know, we would close out a month and by 10 o'clock the next day, you know, everybody had their paychecks. I mean, What's not to like about that? Well, I didn't realize that this billable person was spending four or five or more hours a, a month, you know, to make that all happen and keep everybody happy on the governmental end, et cetera, and move the money around all that. So when, when we uh, gave up on Dell Tech, uh, we had done a lot of research and ended up going with one of the um, – uh, payroll outfits. I don't know if they're regional or national pay corps who we used. And it turned out that at the time there was only three of us. And for the, for the three of us, for them to take care of all of the payroll, including amounts that were being sent to our simple IRA plan, um, 
withholdings to the different cities, all of that stuff they did for about $1,100 a year. You, it's, you know, at $100 an hour, that only represented about 10 hours of billable time. We were spending that in two months out of the year. So it was basically a no brainer. You know, all you needed to do was save a, a, an hour of billable time a month and you can afford to have the payroll done uh, by somebody else. That, that gets you, that, that enters into, you have to change the way you're doing things a little bit in order to have the ch- paychecks show up when you want them to. But uh, it's, you know, it, you just have to change the way you're thinking about it. There's no magic to how you do that. I mean, there's no, no reason you have to do it a certain way is what I'm saying. And that's a wrap for another show about the business of architecture. To get more resources about how you, as an architect, can run a rewarding business that is both fun, flexible, and profitable, visit businessofarchitecture.com and click the Join button to claim your free account to Business of Architecture Insider. As a member, you'll have access to free tools and resources to help you get more clients, start a new firm, and much more. You'll also get access to my book, Social Media for Architects, where you'll learn how to use Internet tools for fun and for profit. Until next week, this has been The Business of Architecture. The views expressed on the show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment, except to help you conquer the world. Bump music credit to Ben Folds 5, Do It Anyway.